I was born in East Africa, just near a national park. The backyard literally was our home and, uh, and the national park there. And in the evenings we used to hear elephants calling out and lions calling out to each other and things like that. This was some distance away from a place called Machakos. Yeah, no, I think, I think uh, that's a very good question. Age is a state of mind. There are very young people. For example, I was in Ladakh at 18,600 feet. Tallest multiple point. Though. Absolutely, and beyond that, looking for snow leopards in minus 40 degrees. And uh, a young man, 28 years old, had to be airlifted because his oxygen level was falling down. And then hypothermia was there. Absolutely, and then altitude sickness and things like that. Yet, I think it's the credit goes to my parents, who gave me solid, good, clean food. Ghee, pure vegetarian food, uh, that I could stay at that altitude for about three weeks. Three weeks? And without any problems. The only problem we had, no sleep, headache constantly, and hallucinations. Absolutely, you're going to get no oxygen. Breathing yeah. is going to be like uh, exercise. Actually, you, couldn't, you couldn't walk more than 10 steps before stopping down. and. Absolutely no oxygen. Gasping, yeah. It's, it's, it's one of the toughest films we have made, and I think looking at uh, uh, Guillermo, Queen of the Mountains, is one of the most difficult films that we have ever made. Gotham and myself, Gotham is my son. We were doing this, we were anchoring it, it's a father and son duo, in search of a snow leopard. And you finally found her. We found her, we found one with two cubs, and then it, it disappeared, and we spent in two and a half years, looking for the mother and the cubs. Two and a half? Years. Two and a half years. So, wildlife films are not, uh, you're not on holiday, you don't Absolutely. go and just get sitting there and you film. But uh, it, is, it is important, not everybody can do this. So as a filmmaker, I make the films, we make the films, and I'm glad my son has joined me. And his wife as well, as she writes, they're a, an amazing team. And uh, we try to bring the mystical world to people. We try to bring the wonders of nature to people. Which they can never see, which they can actually never go and see. Yeah, it's tough. It, not everybody can go. So we share that. And I think there's such a great, and I, we really believe the driving force behind all this is why risk your life? This, when you understand, then you begin to respect. And what you respect, you protect and love. So I think. When you bring out and unfold the mysteries of nature and people begin to understand, then they realize what is the reason for nature to have created such a creature. Every living thing on this planet has a purpose, has a meaning, and it's linked with our lives. If you look at it, man is perhaps the weakest species on the planet. Completely, the, the weakest that can ever be. Well, our children are born, they can't even stand up they need Till 10 months. Yeah. It's like they're handicapped. We have to help them. We have True. to bring them up for the next five years. That's Any true. other animal, the kid is up within and going in no time. 10 seconds. A deer no within time. 10 seconds must be up and go. Even an elephant. If within a giraffe is born, and if it's not moving, I think it's dead. If it's not yeah. getting up and running around. Truly. So I think and that's, that's one of the things that is. And right now, the trouble is, though we are the most intelligent species on the planet, we have become greedy. We've always been greedy. And that is the danger, because the earth could be wiped out. And right now the earth is in a crisis, is in trouble. Very volatile. And, and, and the earth is dying, and all because of us. We have changed the face of the earth. And, uh, but the paradox is that we are the only species on who the planet. Who can carry it on, who can carry yeah. it into the next future. Yeah, we can reverse the damage. We can carry it into the future, as you say. Because we're the only species with that IQ. Yeah. No one else is going to be capable of doing anything good for us. Are we ready? You see, 70 billion animals are slaughtered every year, every year to feed only three and a half to four billion non-vegetarians. 65 billion chicken are slaughtered. Thankfully, 80% are consumed, the rest are thrown away because consumerism has taken up. I mean, the man who's a businessman, look with dollars in his eyes, he just stamps it. Not fit to be eaten after two weeks or six weeks. 
and you fear for your life, so you throw it away, even though it's good, it's not gone. But the shelves must be filled up again. So they emptied out, but there's a pretty the effect the So this is the vicious circle. You know, this is what we have to fight. Lifestyles need to be changed. Humans were not actually meant to consume meat. We consume meat because it was a necessity. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, we have two canines. That is to tear a few things like sugar cane and maybe in the early stages, man had sharper teeth. People in Africa and uh, in America, the Red Indians, they depended on meat. That was their food. But in the trans-Himalayan region, like India, we were grain eaters. And man has evolved. As we evolved from eating about a couple of kilos, we've gone down to 250 grams to 500 grams maximum. And that gives us energy because we know about nutrients, we know about yeah. calories. Because we have the right to be study about everything and we understand what is supposed to be consumed. True. True. We're still an evolving species. We'll always be evolving. Yeah. And right now, as a species on this planet, we are all 80 to 90,000 years old. We still have a long way to go. We've not even covered the entire entire span of Earth has been 5 billion years. We've not even we've continued like 80, 90,000 years. We're like a speck of dust in the entire universe. Absolutely yeah. irrelevant. Yeah, absolutely. You know, if you look at it in totality, as you said, a speck of dust, in a huge ocean of desert, you one speck, and that's the thing. Yeah, one molecule. Yeah. Absolutely, not, not, nothing right now. We just, one species that exists, just luckily the smartest species. And that's by accident, because we have the gift of water, of life. And water has enabled this planet to be a living planet. To survive, to thrive. Yeah, Without water, it's over. And, and the world's water resources are also depleting, and ocean water is not going to be an actual source of human water because it's too expensive to consume. Yeah, it's only, we have access to only half a percent of fresh water on Earth. Yeah. Absolutely and, and minimum. Minimum. And, and that is also in short supply. And then uh, it's running out. And unless we learn how to manage this, a um, few generations they're going to be screwed. Like, Absolutely. Com com completely screwed out of all the benefits that you've grown up with. I will grow. I'm growing up and growing up with right now. So like. So no, if you if you really, there are many areas in which we have to really consumerism has to come down. I I, I remember uh, going to a shop where salt was being sold. Ramdev's shop, and but this is Himalayan salt, which is one of the best salt, low sodium and all that, very good. But it, the packet said it will expire in six months' time or two months' time or two years' time. But rock salt sitting in the Himalayas has been there for millions of years. It's and been so many years to form. Yeah, it didn't. It, it, it doesn't have any expiry date. And the main thing is, it's not ours to take. Yeah, so consumerists force the manufacturers or the deliverers to put a stamp so more can sell. We were working on a film for BBC and we tested some medicines. That was 1961, Astro. I didn't understand. 1961? The medicines Some medicines were made in 1961. There were samples sitting there. So we pulled out a tablet in 2015 to test it. And it was fine? It was absolutely fine, only 10% weak. But absolutely efficacious. Because if it's kept away from moisture, it's fine. Yeah. It doesn't go bad. You don't have to throw it away. But by law, they are required to stamp on yeah. an expiry date. On yeah, it. this is consumerism. Your blood pressure is not supposed to be 80, 120 after the age of 50. But now they're saying, oh, it's got to be 78 and 100. It's so that you buy the medicine to bring it down. Same with cancer. If you go to, if you have cancer, one of the chief reasons is that your vitamin D is low. The other is acidic blood. Cancer and tumors like acidic blood. And they feed on it. The minute it's a fertile ground, just like you throw seed and it grow on a fertile ground. It just needs water. It's yeah. Sugar. Cancer loves acid. Cancer loves sugar. The worst thing on earth is sugar. And sugar is present in everything. Yeah. Sugar is the biggest curse for the planet, really, because it started slave trade. Yeah. Um, and today, it's enslaved the whole world. Diseases start because of that, because it's all. Yeah. And then, and I would like to I mean, 
the list is endless. But I think the time has come for us to, for everyone to stop and think. And just don't wait for the government. Every single individual. The government is not going to do Every single individual can make a difference. And when we start, we people, we take uh, control of our lives, then we can make a change. And that is so crucial for the planet. Okay? Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. And then it's going to be completely gone. Yeah. We, we, yeah, we, we need to wake up faster than we are. And, and uh, no amount of money can produce even a drop of water. And how look, much money, money? Water is the most important source of food. The most important. We, can, we cannot eat for 10 years, but if you don't have water, it's finished. Yeah. 75% of you is water. You need yes, it. You need it. You need it. Every day we need it. And, and we still don't have, we've come so much into the future, we still don't have the technology to convert salt water into... There is, there are, water. but it's too expensive. It's, exactly, it's very expensive, it's not It's not going to be useful because it's not... It is, it's, uh, it's accessible to uh, very rich countries and very, that, very rich. that too because you've got energy, energy comes from fossil fuel at the moment. And that's also going to finish, eventually we're going to run out of that also. Yeah, the natural resources are depleting. And. We have to take stock, and the responsibility falls on media makers, people, thinkers, and leaders. The and leaders. Un unfortunately, our leaders have failed us. Unfortunately, religion has failed us. Wars on earth are because of religion. Leaders are into consumerism, economy. But you cannot, you cannot trade dollars and gold for the environment. Because it's going to finish at one point of time. You need the environment. Every single person needs the environment to survive. It's just a physical thing of currency money. I mean, the amount of money can get us the earth back once it's slipped out from our hands. Absolutely. We are, in, we are facing that. So, so, so if, if, if you think there's one solution to it, if you could apply one solution on a global scale, what, what do you think it could be? I think we need to get rid of our greed, be minimal, and always think that your action is going to affect, affect someone else. Someone else. Multiple. And be cautious. But uncle, greed is always going to be a part of human nature. Like no, I think it's only when you get burnt, yeah. then you learn. Some lessons are going to be tough and hard when the war started. Countries are fighting, and today, look, the same countries are coming together. It's an expensive lesson. Lots of lives were lost. But we learned a few things. Perhaps in our infancy, we are still infantile, and we are still in our infancy. We have made mistakes. Fortunately, some of us are learning. Some of us are becoming minimalistic. And I think the future is vegetarianism. That has to be there. Without it, it is the world cannot function. Yeah, without that, we'll be wiped out. You see, all these creatures that are destroyed and killed, they are energy forms. They have a thought process. We finish up half the reserves of animals just for eating when they're actually to thrive and have their own society, their own environment. Yeah, they have their own ecosystems and they play a role in that ecosystem yes, that exactly. enables you, in a forest, for example, the tiger enables you to get water, moisture, in a sustainable way. So when we break this chain of sustainability in any ecosystem, then we are heading for destruction. We are losing about 25 animals and um, flora, fauna every day, never to come back. Every day we lose 25 different species. Nearly over 10,000 a year, never to return. And they're never going to return. Their genetics are once they're gone, they're gone. There is a thing called natural uh, extinction. That happens when, uh, when Mother species, Nature plays its role. Yeah. When the species reaches its peak. saturation, and then what? Either it mutates into another thing, or then it, it transforms, then it gets out. Yeah, it's done its deed. Then it's, it's so it's like, it's like, it's like a, 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 an egg. Once it becomes a chicken, the egg is no longer required there. Yeah. It must follow a cycle. So each species has a span. And uh, we need, at the moment, every single one. And we, as I said, we, we are still discovering and making mistakes, blunders. Absolutely terrible blunders every day. Still continuing to do the same thing, even after we realize that it is going to cause us harm. Even after we realize, because I, 
I guess that is human nature, right? That's that's what it is. You make the mistake, and then you learn from it. But the thing we're doing here is we're making the mistake continuously, and we're not learning from that mistake. You see, man has become arrogant. In earlier days, when we were kids, we used to respect our parents, yeah. listen to everyone, and the humility. But suddenly, arrogance has crept in, and the arrogance has crept in because of a thing called money. But Money doesn't talk to you. Money doesn't bring you happiness. It's only materialistic. You can only touch it and hold it. Absolutely. I've seen very, very rich people blowing billions, billions. I'm talking about billions, not millions, billions. And getting their daughters wedded. But six months later, the girls are back. Because that's, that money that, did that's not guarantee. That's Indian culture. That's Indian culture. The, the, yeah, the money did not guarantee happiness. Your money does not guarantee happiness. But we still feel that if we spend that amount of money, even though it's an arranged marriage, we are granting that happiness because yeah, yeah. because this money is being spent. Yeah, there's no end for foolishness in this. <laughs> we live in troubled world at the moment. We live in a troubled world. We live in troubled times, and there's a need for restoration. But if if, only, if it's it's only a handful of people who work towards it, this world will still survive for longer. I think I think because everyone. It's no one. It's not going to be like everyone can understand this fact that the world is going down because we only have a certain lifespan, and we don't actually think about what's going to happen after that, right? Because once we're dead and gone, it's true. You see, plastic was a great discovery and, and now wonderful. It's just completely ruined us. The oceans are full of plastic. Everything is full of plastic. Fishes are dying. So many fishes have gone extinct because of plastic. According, according to some scientists, the oceans will be empty of fish by the year 2048. Completely, no fish. completely, and because because overfishing is such a big thing right now. Overfishing is a major issue, and the danger is that fishing actually provides nearly 62 percent of the world's population with direct and indirect livelihood. 62 percent, and it's a cycle. If if you keep continuously fishing, even if fishing is sustainable, fishing is also a thing. You can do that. You can let the we have. As I said, if you are not greedy, then you'll just take what you want. Then we no, we take everything. If we sorry, when we greedy, we take everything. And the greed is the dangerous point. And the greed in fishing, for example, is if I go, if I'm a fisherman, I on a trawler, I throw my net in, and if I catch anchovies and lesser fish or ribbon fish or duck fish, and coming home, I see uh, I see prawns. I drop, I throw all the catch by the two, three tons. So every year, thirty tons of caught fish is just wasted. A waste is thrown back into the ocean, taken out from living from their environment, yeah. killed and processed, and just thrown back. That's thrown back, and so I go for a much lucrative catch because I want more money. Why should I take two tons of anchovies or sardines when I can take prawns which got? That's why caviar is so expensive. That's why it's so expensive because you fish it and you finish all of it, yeah. and now you breed them so that you can get what is inside them. Yep. Most of the food we eat is now chemical.